Miss Ellis. Good evening, Mr. Kellogg. And I know I'm expecting Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds. Are you already, sir? Good. Joan and Ken have beat us to it. How is Mrs. Reynolds' behavior tonight, Amanda? Very bad, senor. She's been drinking heavily, and they are both quarreling something awful. I can see we're going to be in for it, Grace. Leave it to little Johnny to kill a party. Hey, senor. Bring me a drink. Make it a... Lemonade. Hello, Bill. Good. Now, take the weight off your feet. Bring on the grape juice, Amanda. Si, senora. Aren't you here a little early, Joan? You'd have been here this morning if Ken had had his way. Tell me about this joint that he likes. Can't figure it out. Can you, Grace? Uh, no, I can't, Joan. No, you can't. Well, I can. The little brunette package, Ken's ex-sweetheart from New York, Lola Dean. Excuse me. I'm going to the bar. Make sure it's the bar and not Lola's dressing room. Oh, now, Johnny, please. Oh, no, you're being very unfair. Ken likes Lola, but so does Bill and Clark. And that's and... what's burning you, Clark Dean. You'd turn inside out to get one of your paws on Lola's boyfriend and the other on his father's millions, wouldn't you, Grace? Take off that mask. You hate Lola as much as I do. I think I shall have to be excused. You don't want to go any more than Ken does or I do. I came here to keep my eyes on Ken. You came here with that excuse for a man to watch Clark. While well, Lola feeds them all bait. Where are you going, Johnny? Uh, hey, why don't you watch where you're going? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, thanks. This is Reynolds. She's a frequent patron of this place. Interesting problem in chemistry. Sweet wine often turn nice woman sour. <laughs> yes, that's very good, Senor Tan. Senor Chan has the happy faculty of to combine business with pleasure. Number two son behave about hot music like corn over hot fire. Pops. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen the samba dance before, Jimmy? Have I? I saw it in the States months ago. It's taken on pretty fast down here, though. Yes, it has. They do it pretty good, too. They should. It's one of our national dances. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't think. Biggest mistakes in history make by people who didn't think. I'm sorry. He's quite all right, Jimmy. Gee, thanks, Cap. Senor Suto, please excuse number two son's North American familiarity. Expensive college education failed to teach offspring correct manner of addressing honorable delegado or captain of police of Rio de Janeiro. Oh, Pop, I, I didn't understand. He didn't think. <laughs> Never mind, Jimmy. As you North Americans say, he's quite OK. Thanks, Cap. I mean, Senor Soto. Say, could you get someone to teach me how to swing that dance? Oh, certainly. <laughs> Unfortunate. Number two son have no time to learn Brazilian samba. Must finish business quickly. Must arrest Lola Dean tonight. Don't look now. I won't. But hurry, darling. Hurry. You can take your hands down, but keep your eyes closed. I can't wait. Don't be so nervous, Lola. You'll make me stick myself. I know. It's a brooch. Now you've spoiled everything. Oh, Clark. It's gorgeous. Oh, darling. What can I say? You know what I want you to say. What? Say yes. Oh, yes. Yes, darling. Then we'll be married the first of the month. Oh, can't we make it any sooner than that? <laughs> Wait a minute, honey. I have a little missionary work to do with the family first. Oh. You think they might object? Oh, it isn't that, but... Why wait? You forget, darling. Mother's a Brazilian, and there are traditions. All right. Helen! Lily! Wish me luck, Helen. Clark and I are going to be married. Congratulations, dear. Well, you don't seem very excited. Here I'm all bursting with love. I guess you... I'm just selfish. But you see, being secretary and companion to you has been a very cozy job. Oh, how ridiculous. You and Lily go with the deal. Don't they, Clark? Why, yes, of course. Thank you both. Best of luck, Miss Lola. Thank you, Lily. And you, Mr. Denton. Excuse me. You are our next Miss Dean. Oh, good heavens. Run along, darling. Hurry, Lily, my gown. Helen, my jewels. Oh, Clark. Yes, dear? Scare up some of the gang and invite them over to my house for supper. We'll celebrate. Of course, honey. 
But must we? After all, they're not really our friends. Oh, the more reason for asking them. Grace Ellis's face will turn purple with envy when she sees my brooch. And Joan Reynolds, when she hears I'm no longer a freelance, she'll simply smother me with darlings and dears. Oh, I know it sounds mean, but I waited almost a year to crow like this, and tonight I'm going to do my crowing. Oh, but dear. Please, darling, let me be mean, just for tonight. Okay, I'll invite them. Thank you. Great news, folks. Where's Joan? After properly insulting both of us, she departed. She did. What's the great news? Oh, uh, Clark invited us over to Lola's after the show. They're throwing a party, an engagement party. Engagement party? Oh, isn't that marvelous? Yep, they're getting married next Saturday. Clark chased Lola every year, and she finally caught him. Why should this make you so happy? Why? Why, why with Lola out of the running, Joan will stop swinging that tomahawk. Say, I've got to find that jealous spouse of mine. See you with Lola's. Bill, would you mind taking me home? I've got a splitting headache. Now, Grace, that's not very sporting, is it? You should go along to Lola's, even if her engagement to Clark really hurts. Bill Kellogg, I fully intended going. I merely wanted to go home to freshen up a bit. You needn't come if you don't... I'll come. After all, it's what an escort's for, isn't it? If we're going to arrest her, we'd better get along to her dressing room. Be make big scandal here. Rather perform unpleasant duty at Miss Dean's home. They're still applauding. Aren't you going to do an encore? <laughs> From now on, darling, I'll be doing all my encores for Clark. Is he here? Yes. Thanks, Arturo. I'm sorry. Shall I go in the other room? <laughs> no, you'll have to get used to this from now on. Who are the flowers from? Paul Wagner. There's a note on the other side. Who's Paul Wagner? Oh, just one of my feverish fans. I've never even seen him. Telephone him, Helen, and say that I can't see him tonight or any time. <laughs> you know, Clark, when you marry Lola, you're going to make my life a whole lot simpler. Where's Lily? I sent her home to help the servants get ready for the party. What party? Oh, good heavens, of course. Where's that new suit I got at Jono's? Hanging right behind the screen. I'd better hurry. Excuse me, darling. Oh, Lola, on your way home, don't forget to stop at the Continental Hotel. Why? Where is your mind tonight? After all the trouble I went to to get you an appointment with Marana, you've completely forgotten about it. Oh, good heavens. Of course. Marana? Who's he? He's an Indian mystic. Very expensive. Since when have you gone in for fortune tellers? He isn't a fortune teller. He's a... You tell him, Helen. Marana calls himself a psychic. <laughs> Sounds spooky. <laughs> you don't go to Marana for a reading. He calls it a psychog... A psychognosis. That's what makes it so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, honey, you're not going to see this Marana person, are you? It'll only take a few minutes. You won't mind waiting in the car for me, will you? Wait in the car? Not on your life. If you go, I'm going with you. I should say not. That's just like letting you read my diary. Oh, no. My skeletons in the closet are my skeletons. How do I look? Beautiful. <laughs> Hurry up now. I'll straighten up a few things here and see you at home later on. All right, Helen. Good night. Good night. See you later. It's only be a minute, darling. He tells you I love you? He's a faker. <laughs> I, 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 I like you very much. I, 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 I like you so Good evening, Miss Dean. Good evening. Won't you come in? I was just listening to your latest recording. I hadn't heard it myself. Not bad. I should say not. I've heard you sing many times at the casino. You have a lovely voice. Thank you. Won't you sit down? And please take off your hat. You'll be much more comfortable during the psychognosis. I've made some fresh coffee. You have some? It's delicious. Yes, please. Interesting, isn't it? Yes, very. I value it highly, not only because of its artistic merit, because it's associated with my early days in the Orient. But that's another story. Isn't it amazing the amount of stimulation we feel we need in our daily lives? Coffee, cigarettes. Everyone but my fiancé, he doesn't indulge in either. I can understand his abstinence. Being near you, he doesn't like stimulation. That's a very pretty compliment. 
your coffee. Thank you. And now let's go from the sublime to the infinite. Let's peep around the corner of infinity and see what we can see. Answer my questions, please. What is your real name? Lola Wagner. How long have you lived in Rio? Over a year. Where did you come from? New York. How long were you in New York? About six months. Where did you live before that? Honolulu. Why did you leave there? I ran away. Why? I... I killed a man. What was his name? Manuel Cardozo. He came to Honolulu on a business trip. Why did you kill him? I was madly in love with him. Didn't you know he was married? Yes. I wanted him to divorce his wife and marry me. He refused, and I killed him. What happened? Don't be alarmed, Miss Dean. I must have fainted. No, you were in a semi-comatose state. I induced it with a cigarette and a coffee. You see, in order to give my patients a proper psychic gnosis, I must free them from any impediment of expression or conscious inhibitions. This combination accomplishes that admirably. But you had coffee and a cigarette, too. Yes, the coffee was the same. The cigarette wasn't. I don't know whether to be frightened or, or angry. Neither, please. Frankly, I wouldn't have come here alone if I'd known that this considering, was Considering... Considering what you've just revealed, that would be most unfortunate. What did I say? I must be perfectly frank with you, Miss Dean. Yes, please. Tell me. You spoke of having killed a man in Honolulu, Mr. Manuel Cadoza. <laughs> I couldn't have. I've never been to Honolulu. You needn't I... defend yourself to me. I'm not a policeman. Besides, I treat anything I learn as highly confidential. Excuse me. Yes? Is uh, Miss Dean here? Certainly. Won't you come in? Oh, Clark! This is... Your fiancé, Mr. Denton. Why, yes. How did you know? Oh, Mr. Morano is simply marvelous. You must come to him for a reading sometime. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. On the contrary, I'm glad you came. Miss Dean is perfectly captivating. Don't be disturbed. If you have a few minutes tomorrow, drop in and we'll have a talk. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Peter. Yes, sir. Paul Wagner isn't the only one who can dish out orchids. Oh, aren't you the jealous one? Thank you, darling. Mr. and Mrs. Clark B. Denton. Sounds good, doesn't it? Aren't you listening? Clark. Let's elope tonight. Oh, why, Lola, are you joking? We could catch the four o'clock plane. Yes, but honey. Oh, darling, it would be far more exciting to be married in the States. Please. Well, all right. You are an angel. I'll tell you what. You drop me off at my house, then hurry home and pack and come back and get me. Say, listen, what about your friends we invited to the party? They can see us off at the airport. Very well, dear. I'm terribly late, Lily. Have any of the guests arrived? No, Miss Lola. Good. Is Miss Helen home? Not yet. When she comes in, send her to my room. Yes, ma'am. I won't be needing you, Lily. So go and help Margot in the kitchen. All right. Good evening, madam. I should like to offer my congratulations. Thank you, Rice. Is there anything you wish, madam? Oh, yes. 
Bring me my airplane luggage. Very good, madam. What happened after that? Miss Lola turned to Mr. Denton and said, Helen and Lily go with the deal, don't they, Clark? And what did Monsieur Clark say? He bowed and smiled. Oh, Margot, he's so handsome. It must be heavenly to be in love. Oh, stop moving like a sick calf. Didn't Miss Lola mention me? No, she didn't. Hmm, I suppose I'll be fired. Well, I should have known better than to go into service with a maiden lady. I'm pretty sure Mademoiselle Lola won't forget us. She's been mighty nice to both of us. Nice to us? Yes, until something goes wrong. And I'd rather tangle with a jungle cat. <laughs> Mademoiselle Lola is an actress. She has temperament. In my opinion, Madame Lola is... Lily, open the door. Rice. Don't you think you'd better stop drinking? Now, well, thank you to mind your own business. As yet, I'm still in charge here. Good evening, Mr. Reynolds. Good evening, my little Lotus Blossom. Has Mrs. Reynolds arrived? No, she hasn't. Hi, Helen. Hello, Ken. What's the matter? Did you lose your wife? Yep, looks like I'm stagged tonight. Do you mind if I attach myself to you? Love it. Romy. What, again? 67 points. It's 160 you owe me. Hi, Phil. Hi, Grace. Hello there. Meet my new girlfriend. You ought to see what mine's ring to me. <laughs> hey, where's the happy couple? Lola will be in soon, and Clark hasn't arrived yet. It's customary for the hostess to be present at her own parties. We've been here over an hour. Perhaps we're not welcome. Oh, don't be silly. Lola's a little upset. We had a disagreement. I thought Lola too impetuous, and... Oh, but you don't know. They're eloping tonight. What? Uh, yes, taking the 4 o'clock plane to the States. When did they decide that? Well, I don't... Helen. Yes? Excuse me. Some guests we weren't expecting. The police department. Joan. Oh, don't worry, Ken. They're here to see Lola. I'm Helen Ashby, Miss Dean's secretary. Senor Soto, delegado of police. This is Lieutenant Chan of Honolulu. How do you do, Mr. Chan? And I'm Jimmy Chan of Honolulu, Pop's assistant. Good evening. Good evening. Is there anything I can do? Yes. I'm so sorry, but we must see Miss Dean personally. Lily. Lily, see if Miss Dean has finished dressing. Won't you come in? Thank you. Wait here. Miss Helen! Miss Helen! What is it? Miss Lola. Oh. She's dead. Stabbed. Senor Suto, with your permission, like to investigate. By all means. I will telephone for the coroner and the fingerprint experts. Thank you. Suggest you rest for a few minutes. Examination may take a long time. Please. Thank you. Hey, Pop. Yes? I've got a theory. It's suicide. Startling deduction. Explain, please. Well, she got help that we were closing in on her. And rather than face it, she stabbed herself. In the back? Well, I, I didn't see the knife. I assumed that she was lying on it. Assumption incorrect. Well, then the knife is missing. Conclusion about murder weapon must wait for coroner. The coroner will be here shortly. Hey, Pop, look. Look at all these clues. A crushed corsage, a platinum brooch, a man's handkerchief, with the initial W on it, and a broken wristwatch. I have another theory, Pop. It's a clear case of robbery. Why? The hands of the watch stopped exactly at 12.15. And that's when she was knocked off. But Miss Dean didn't get in until 12.30. I let her in. Oh, that blows my theory sky high. I'm sorry. I have no regret. I'm proud pretty young country woman possess alert mind. Thank you, sir. Observe, please. Murderer set hands of watch backward, but failed to return stem to proper position. Evidently, the murderer will use this as an alibi by proving he or she was away from here at 12.15. Precisely. It also occurs to me, Senor Chan, that these clues make an interesting grouping, as if they were carefully placed there. Don't you agree? Most thoughtful observation. Clues arranged carefully to throw police off right trail. That makes the murderer a professional. I don't believe that's necessarily the logical conclusion, Jimmy. The murderer may or may not be a professional, but one thing is sure. He or she is extremely cool-headed, cold-blooded, and, and very stupid. But why stupid, Pop? It's got me puzzled. 
That proved my point very well. <laughs> do, you, do you wish to begin the preliminary questioning of the servants? Would prefer to wait for full report from coroner. I am quite sure robbery is not the motivation. Still, while we're waiting, we might as well eliminate it as a possibility, eh? Agree. Uh, please. Would like to ask question of Miss Ashby? Certainly. Thank you. Excuse, please. Miss Dean possess fine jewels? Yes. Are familiar where she keep them? In her wall safe over here. Shall I open it for you? I know the combination. Please. Use handkerchief. Thank you. Jewels are gone. Must have... See? I told you it was robbery. And here's what happened. The murderer came here to rob the joint. He wore the handkerchief across his face. Here, tie this, will you? He waited for his team to come home. He waited for Miss Dean to come home. Then he forced her to open the safe. And while he was reaching for the jewels, Miss Dean tried to get away. He grabbed her. They struggled like this, and this, and this. She fought back. Fight back, will you? Oh! He lost his handkerchief. The cassage was ripped off. The watch was smashed. And in the excitement to get away, he forgot to pick up the handkerchief. Look for a guy whose name begins with a W, and that's your man. No good, Pop? Why murderer stopped to take jewels from box? Why not take whole box? And why surprised victim not scream? And why killer forget to take handkerchief and not forget to take murder weapon? Oh, Pop, you're too technical. <laughs> Please. Thank you. Uh, Senor Chan, while we're waiting for the coroner, I would like to investigate the other rooms. So, please. Come. Miss Lily, why you kill Miss Dean? But, Pop. But I didn't kill Miss Dean. I only saw her when she came in. I was helping Margot the cook. Please, Mr. Chan. Miss Lola's been so very kind to me. Mm, sorry to disturb. Accusation save asking many questions. Gee, Pop. My heart stopped beating for a moment. <laughs> Devoted parent no longer interfere with blooming affair of heart. Oh, Pop. What is honorable family name, please? Wong. Oh, most satisfactory. Come. This is the sitting room. Hey, Pop, I'll have a look around the house. Uh, just a matter of routine. Understand. Will you show me around, please? Yes, this way. <laughs> Some guests were waiting for Miss Dean. They should be informed of tragedy. <laughs> no, not that one. This one over here. You think so? Sure, I'll do. <laughs> you fool. What's the matter? Lola. She's been murdered. Murdered? How awful! The investigation will proceed as soon as the coroner has completed his examination. Regret necessity of asking you to remain here. Miss Ashby may speak with you in private. Certainly. We can go in the dining room. Senor? No, I must ask these gentlemen and this lady a few questions. You, senor. Your name, please. As well as I can remember, that's all that happened this evening, Mr. Chan. You speak with Mr. Wagner on phone yourself? Yes. He seemed upset when you convey Miss Dean's message? Rather bitter. What he say? Well, I can't remember his exact words, but he said something about being a very persistent man and hung up. You say she went to see Mr. Marana, the mystic? Yes. You also know him? I saw him once last week. Professionally, of course. Why you say professionally? Well... Uh, you afraid I might draw a wrong conclusion? Well, he isn't entirely unattractive. Pardon me. The coroner has finished his examination. Would you excuse us, please, Miss Ashby? Yes, certainly. Miss Ashby, been most helpful. So? Uh, Mr. Chan. You suspect her? Long experience teach until murderer found suspect everybody. Even you, Senor Suto. <laughs> oh, well, if, if you are so much suspicious, Clark Denton, uh, Miss Dean's fiancé, has just arrived. They were to elope tonight, you know. Uh, Miss Ashby, tell me all about him. What was coroner's report? Uh, Miss Dean was stabbed through the back by a very thin instrument. 
The angle at which the instrument entered the victim's body indicates she was uh, bending over at the time, packing perhaps. Uh, also, it indicates that she was not aware of the murderer's presence in the room. Or if aware, she not consider a person in room unfriendly. Yes, that's a possibility. And uh, fingerprints? <laughs> no, very few. And all carefully smudged. But I expected that after seeing how the clues were properly arranged for us. Evidently, not all clues arranged. Precisely. Still, we've got to eliminate those obvious ones. Yes. Agree. Meanwhile, uh, suggest you send policemen for two gentlemen, Mr. Wagner and Mr. Marana, the psychic. Uh, bring them here. Both men live at Continental Hotel. Sounds very promising. As number two son would say, case in bag, it's cinch. <laughs> the case is in the bag. It's a cinch. What makes you so certain, Mr. Chan? Let's make it uh, Jimmy and Lily, huh? Okay, Jimmy. Uh, as I was saying, from what you tell me, there are enough suspects to take care of a massacre. Well, I don't know much about these things. Oh, you're young. Stick around me. I'll educate you. Would you, Jimmy? Sure. Um, say, maybe you could do something for me. What? Can you dance the samba? Yes, why? Will you teach me? Now? Here? Sure. We can go out in the garden. We can't dance without music. Here. I'll hum it for you. Oh, that's All right. Hey! Hey there! How do you get out of this place anyway? Help me out of this jungle, will you? This isn't a jungle. Oh, it isn't? Where does Lola Dean live? This is her home. Why didn't she say so? Say, you're cute. Who are you, anyhow? I'm Jimmy Chan. He and his father, Charlie Chan, are famous detectives. Did you say detectives? A murder's been committed here. That's what I've been wanting to... What? Miss Dean has been killed. Are you on the level? Yes, ma'am. Somebody beat me to it, huh? Wouldn't be hard to guess who, either. You know who did it? Yeah, and I know why, too. You'd better tell my father about that. What's he got to do with it? He's handling the case. And Jimmy's his assistant. Oh, I'll be a maraschino cherry. A Chinese flatfoot from Brazil. From Honolulu. Hey, wait a minute. Did you say Honolulu? Yes, ma'am. Ooh, am I woozy? How did I get here? You're all right. Yeah, I'm all right. I start out in Rio and I end up in Honolulu. <laughs> Say, come in, will you? Yeah, but I don't need anybody to help me. You go ahead and go. Waikiki, here I come. Yippee! I resent being treated as a criminal. Remember, Mr. Chan, I'm an American citizen. I'm proud to say so am I. We should get on splendidly together. Hey, Pop! Johnny! Ken, are you in Honolulu, too? Honolulu? Don't be mad at me, Kenny boy. I'm so glad you found me. It's been so horrible the last few days. Now, Johnny, take it easy. Take it easy. You're all in Honolulu. What's all this Honolulu business, Joan? Hey, you. You killed Lola. You're insane. Oh, I am, am I? Where's your father? This is Lieutenant Chan, Joan. I've met before. Tonight at Casino Carioca, I pick up your purse. You did? Thanks. Here's your man, Lieutenant. If I ever get you ten, if you put her under a hot light and give her the third degree, she'll talk. Why, you... You seem most familiar with certain American police methods. Why shouldn't I be? I was married to a cop once. That was before I met my Kenny boy. Now, Johnny, come and sit down. Come and sit down. Hey, Pop. Excuse, please, Mrs. Reynolds. Number two, son, inform me, you say... Oh, a stool pigeon, eh? Joan, go on, Mr. Chan. You say you wish killed Miss Dean yourself, but somebody beat you to it. Yeah, she did. She hadn't got to fill Lola full of lead myself. That's what I came here for. Wouldn't take much encouragement to let her have it instead. This has gone far enough. I insist upon being permitted to speak to the ambassador. I'm very sorry, Miss Ellis, but until Lieutenant Chan has completed his questioning, nobody will be permitted to leave this room. Gun recently fired. Suggest ballistic expert compare gun with bullet found in victim's body. Holy mackerel. Maybe I shot her and didn't know it. Steady, Joan. 
，咁样都啱啊！八，嗰、那个女人唔系俾枪打死嘅呀，佢俾人吉死嘅呀。只好系被高打手，我哋警察睇唔到。What are they saying? I don't know, sir. It's all Chinese to me. What? Sure, I don't speak the language. I was raised in an American orphanage in San Francisco. 譬如佢将过你呢，你又捉唔到佢呢？冇错，再枪落袋。Please excuse number two son bad manners. When very excited, he sometimes laps into ancient honorable language. I beg your pardon, sir. And Mr. Paul Wagner is here with a Hindu gentleman, a Mr. Marana. Show them into the sitting room. Yes, sir. And please bring strong drink for charming ex-wife of policeman. Thanks, yes, Lieutenant. You're a gentleman. Coffee. <clears throat> yes, sir. Will you step inside, please? Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Evening? It's two o'clock in the morning. Won't you be seated? Thank you. Why'd you pull me off of that boat? Lieutenant Chan will explain. You were leaving Rio de Janeiro? Sure, I was leaving and glad to get away from here. Why? I never wanted to see Miss Dean or set foot in her house again. You've been here at this house before? Certainly. A couple of hours ago. Hey, Pop, the handkerchief with the W on it. What's this all about, anyway? Miss Dean, been murdered. Lola, dead? Poor kid. You know Miss Dean long time? She was my wife. We were divorced three years ago. I've carried the torch for her ever since. Jealousy, Pop. Continue, Mr. Wagner. Before going back to the States, I thought I'd give her one more chance to turn me down. She refused to see me at the casino, so I came here and waited till she got home. Excuse me, Mr. Chan. I answered the door all evening and I didn't see me. I know you didn't. I knew Lola would send back word not to let me in, so I went around the back way. You remain long time? Only a few moments. After I found out she was going to elope, I, I knew it was hopeless. The handkerchief, Pop. Listen, you, if you found one of my handkerchiefs, I might have dropped it climbing over the wall as I arrived. You leave same way, by back wall? No. He came in with some of Lola's luggage. She asked him to show me out. Gentlemen, speak truth? I can only testify as to the gentleman's manner of leaving the premises. He left through the front door. Thank you. Out of sorts. Please be seated. So sorry to have delayed journey. I have nothing more to tell you. Unfortunately, must ask you to remain. I suppose it's my turn next to pull my neck out of a noose. Should have a little trouble. Why? Employ a professional ability, mind reading. I'm afraid that has its limitations. I believe, Mr. Chan, that I... You know my name? Yes, I've seen you in Honolulu. And I believe that I can easily establish my innocence by suggesting that you check with the floor clerk at my hotel. You'll find I haven't left the room since 10.30. However, I have something here that might be useful to you. May I use the phonograph? Yes, of course. Over here, Mr. Chan. Watch out, Pop. He's oily and slippery. Slippery men sometimes slip in own oil. Shall we begin? Will you answer my questions, please? What is your real name? Lola Wagner. How long have you lived in Rio? Over a year. Where did you come from? New York. And how long were you in New York? About six months. Where did you live before that? Honolulu. Why did you leave there? I ran away. Why? I killed a man. What was his name? Manuel Cardozo. He came to Honolulu on a business trip. Why did you kill him? I was madly in love with him. Didn't you know he was married? Yes. I wanted him to divorce his wife and marry me. He refused. I killed him. That is all. Most interesting. I'm curious to learn how you obtained confession from Miss Dean. I got it by putting Miss Dean in a semi comatose condition. You resort to hypnotism? No. A combination of caffeine and coffee and a natural herb in the cigarette. Oh, Pop, you don't believe all that stuff, do you? Why? 
You make record because you are Mr. Alfredo Cardoza. How do you know my real name? Professional ability, detective. You are brother of man Lola Wagner killed. Yes, Mr. Chan. Despite the Honolulu police and everyone else, I was convinced that my brother had not committed suicide, but that he was murdered. Agree. I held same conviction. Proceed. I've spent over a year running down clues, and they all pointed to Lola Wagner, or Miss Dean, as she called herself. Miss Ashby was one of my first patients. I compelled her to have Miss Dean come to see me. Compelled? Yes. You see, a patient in a semi-comatose condition reveals many things that they later want kept confidential. Miss Ashby was very revealing and therefore very obliging. What do you propose to do with record? In the morning, I was going to take it to the American consul and ask him to have the local police make the arrest. When police call on you at your hotel, they tell you Miss Dean murdered? No. Then why you bring record here? Mr. Chan, when a man works over a year to get a valuable confession like this, he doesn't leave it in a hotel room. Oh, horse feathers. Silence. I'm sorry, Pop. It's all a lot of hooey to me. I might go for everything if it weren't for this semi-comatose stuff. If it would help to allay your suspicions, my young friend, I'd be glad to prove my ability to accomplish this semi-comatose stuff. You're a bet. Have I your permission, Mr. Chan? Most happy to give permission. Well, what are we waiting for? Very well. May I have some coffee, please? Yes, certainly. Rice. Cigarette? Oh, thanks. You had better sit down. Oh, I don't need to sit down. No, just as you say. Will you drink this, please? He's all right. I assure you he'll have no bad effects from this. You may question him now. Answer questions, please. Explain bent fender on parent's car before we leave Honolulu. I banged it into a fire plug. In Honolulu, you say you not use car that day. I was lying. Explain also failure in mathematics at college. Mathematics class is eight in the morning. I am too lazy to get up that early. What is largest interest in present murder investigation? Miss Lily. She sure is cute. I go for her like flies for honey. After this, you no longer use parent's car, then you not bump into fire plug. Also, you rise very early in the morning in order to attend mathematics class at college and keep mind on present investigation and not on pretty Chinese cousin. Gee, Pop, did I... D oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Marana. I take back everything I said. That's all right, you're a game boy. And thank you for helping me to vindicate myself. Excuse, please. Must consult with honorable associate. Uh, could provide guests with refreshment? Why, yes, Mr. Chan. I've already arranged it. Come on, everybody. I'm fairly starved. Oh, my. I know how you feel, Clark, but won't you come and join us? Maybe you can persuade him, Helen. Come on, Clark. Oh, Lily, I hope you didn't mind what I said about you. No, I didn't, Jimmy. I liked it. That's swell. Let's go out in the garden. I'd love to, but I've got to help the cook. Okay, well, come back when you're through then, huh? Won't you join us, young man? Oh, no, thanks. Oh, Mr. Marana, yes. uh, can I... Uh, is it possible to get... Why, certainly. You can have a cigarette right now. For the young lady, eh? How'd you know what I had in mind? Have you forgotten? Professional ability. Mind reader. You think you have found something? Remote possibility. Well, considering that thus far, all we have is a large group of suspects, each with a very strong alibi. Even a remote possibility sounds encouraging. This possibility, very remote. 
Number two son call this long shot. I have played those before and occasionally have won. Experience teach. Unless I witness present, every murder case is long shot. What is your long shot? Observe. Tip a pin is broken off. One moment. Looks like long shot begin to turn into short shot. Examine. Observe scratches in floor. Yes. Oh, then your idea is that the murderer crushed the brooch with his shoe and that the broken tip of the pin still remains embedded in the sole. Mm. Well... Too big long shot for you? There is no harm to try. What's your plan? Come with me. When this mess is over, Clark, why not come up to my dad's place in Maine? Have all guests had refreshments? Yes, sir. Please close door. Will you excuse us? This floor has polished surface, no rug. Suggest we examine floor under chairs where guests were sitting. Lily, come here. I'm busy. Come here, I tell you. Ow! Shut up. Now, remember what I told you. The police should ask you any questions. You don't know a thing. You didn't see me carry anything into my room, do you understand? You're hurting my arm, Rose. That's nothing to what you'll get if you don't keep your mouth shut. I won't say anything, I promise. Please let go of me. Well, remember what I told you then. Still haven't found anything? Must have patience. Senor Chan, I'm afraid this possibility is too remote. One moment, please. Here, observe. Yes, those are definitely pin scratches. please. Has earned right to carry one. You haven't seen anything yet, Pop. Wait till you see this, Senor Suto. Well, Miss Dean's jewels, no doubt. Yep. The butler's your man, Pop. Most incriminating, but not proof of murder. Oh, listen, Pop, what do I have to bring you? A talking picture of this killer knifing Miss Dean in the back? Same would be most excellent proof. 
Have something to say? Yes, those are Miss Dean's jaws, all right. But I didn't kill her. I only happened to enter the room when I saw... He's dead. There's the gun, Pop. It's a cinch. All we got to do is find out who had it in his pocket. Not very difficult. Who? You. Sometime learn not to carry a gun in outside coat pocket. Excuse me. One of you turned the lights off at this switch. Pardon me, Senor Suto, but this isn't the only switch that controls the lights in this room. There's one over there. And another over there. Excuse me. Now look here, Mr. Sudo. I'm sick and tired of all this. Miss Ellis, I regret to say that your personal discomfort is of no concern to us at all right now. Two people have been murdered here tonight. It's quite obvious that the same person committed both crimes. And that that person is in this house, in this very whole room right now. One of you, in order to stop Rice from telling who killed Miss Dean, turned out the lights at that switch. Or that switch. Or that switch. And took the gun from Jimmy's pocket and shot the butler. Also, I wish you to know, Senor Suto and Salt have discovered method of trapping murderer. Mr. Chan, may I ask one question? Certainly. Amateur detective work has been more or less a hobby with me, and I've especially admired your work. So I know that a trap is an essential part of the technique of a good detective, but doesn't tipping the murderer off to the fact that you have a trap set defeat the fundamental purpose of it? Sort of puts the murderer on guard. Precisely, Mr. Kellogg. Putting murderer on guard is the trap. Well, I hadn't thought of that. That's very good. Here we are, knee-deep in murders, and Bulldog Drummond comes to life. I find his comments most interesting, Mrs. Reynolds. Perhaps Mr. Chan would even be unorthodox enough to reveal the exact nature of the trap. Most happy. Can best do so if everyone will come with me into dining room, please. Please take same chairs as before. I don't remember where I... Oh, oh yes, I found this. Oh, John, you were there. Uh, Mr. Wagner, you were here. Ken, you were at the end of the table. That's right. Thank you. This is very exciting. So is parachute jumping, but I don't like it. We'll explain purpose of unusual procedure. Senor Suto and Self have discovered freshly made scratches on floor in Miss Dean's room. Have also discovered similar scratches here on floor near one of these chairs. Have assumed scratches made by tip of pin missing from Miss Dean's crushed brooch. Is possible this pin still lodged in shoe of murderer. We'll find out in a few moments. That's a very clever deduction, don't you think so, Joan? Be just my luck that I picked up that pin. Stop worrying. You weren't in Laura's room. How do I know where I was tonight? Well, if you ask me, the murderer's making a great mistake in underestimating Mr. Chan. From his reputation, I should say he was making a fatal mistake. Mr. Chan. Yes, Mr. Kellogg. If you don't mind, one more question. I like your processes of deduction, but could you say, if you were successful in finding this pin, that it gives positive proof of guilt? Couldn't you, or Senor Soto, or the murderer even, have tricked it from Miss Dean's room into this room and one of us stepped on it? Is possible. Well, in that case, what would you do? Perhaps follow a suggestion offered by former wife of policeman. Put each of you under hot lamp and give you third degree. Would you really? Prefer not to walk across before coming to bridge. Yes, but if oh, you're... Oh, be quiet, Bulldog Drummond. Come on, Lieutenant. I can't stand this suspense. Near what chair did you find those scratches? This one. Miss oh. Ashby's chair? Why... You're not serious, Mr. Chan. Surely you don't think that I have... Did not say that, Miss Ashby. Merely said found scratches near this chair. With kind permission, we'll examine shoes, please. Yes, of course. Nothing here. Other shoe, please.
You were right, Senor Chan. The pin. Well, what about it? I was in Lola's room. My shoe could have picked it up. It is possible, Miss Ashby, but... Excuse, please. To satisfy a suspicious colleague, suggest you undergo questions after using Mr. Marana's cigarette with coffee. Have no objections? Of course not. Uh, pour coffee, please. Cigarette, Miss Ashby. Here's the coffee, Pop. But it's cold. Caffeine exists in coffee, hot or cold. Drink this, please. Prefer to ask questions? Yes. Uh, you killed Lola Dean? Miss Ashby. You killed Lola Dean, didn't you? No. But you did kill Rice, the butler. No. Do you have any knowledge of who might have killed them? No. You've vindicated yourself, Miss Ashby. Sorry to have embarrassed you. That's quite all right, Mr. Chan. We'll continue with experiment, please. Two to one, Grace is next. I'm willing. I'll bet you are. We'll try cigarette on humble self. Oh, Mr. Chan. Please be seated, Mr. Chan. Four coffee. A copper giving himself the third degree. Now I've seen everything. What's the big idea, Pop? Wish to give son opportunity to question parent. Say, that's swell. Here's the cigarette, Mr. Chan. Thank you. In these troubled times, best to be economical. Match, please. Don't do it, Pop. Supposing it hits you harder than it hit me. Think of your heart. Afraid I not wake up? Yeah. Appreciate son's devotion. Make parent very happy. That makes us all happy. Just one big happy family. Oh, cut it out, Lieutenant. Let's get this thing over with. Uh, match, please. Wonder why it doesn't fold up. Don't you feel woozy, Pop? It isn't working. He isn't going under. Slip him a Mickey and he'll go under. Do something, Senor Soto. The cigarette's made Pop wacky. He's acting awful funny. Mm -hmm. Practically laying us in the aisles. Quiet, Joan. You're watching a master at work. You're quite right, Mr. Kellogg. He is a master. You can stop smoking that cigarette now, Mr. Chan. And you can stop worrying your devoted son. I killed Lola Dean. I do it? I still think Grace bumped her off. Arrest him. Just One moment. Obviously, Marana was implicated. As soon as I saw the cigarette didn't affect Mr. Chan, I realized... Wait a minute. Mr. Chan, you smoked the same cigarette that Helen did, didn't you? Then why did it affect her and not you? Oh, that's a cinch. Pop's got a stronger constitution. No, Miss Ashby merely pretends cigarette affect her. Was willing to undergo questions because she knew Mr. Marana would not give her a potent cigarette. Then Helen must be Marana's accomplice. Wait a minute, that's stupid. I killed Miss Dean to avenge my brother. The butler caught me in the act and I had to kill him in order to keep him from exposing me. Miss Ashby had nothing to do with it. She killed Lola Dean, also Rice the butler. No, no. Very noble of you to defend wife of dead brother, Mrs. Barbara Cardosa. All right. Wait a minute, they can't make you talk. Don't you talk. No, Alfredo. It's over. I'm glad it's over. For one whole year I've thought of nothing, lived for nothing, but to find the person who killed my husband. And tonight I found her. Yes. I killed Lola Dean. 
I killed the butler, too. Barbara, stop it. I've got to go on. I can't pretend any longer. Mr. Chan, after Lola left Alfredo's tonight, he telephoned me and told me about her confession. Yes? He said he was going to turn her over to the authorities in the morning. Go on. When I got home, Lola was packing. She told me that she was eloping with Clark. Tonight. I asked her why the sudden change in plans. And she said that Marana had advised it. I knew she was lying. She was guilty and afraid. Afraid Marana wouldn't keep her secret. She went on to say that I might not hear from her for some time. That she wanted to be alone with Clark. Something about the way she said it made me realize that if she left tonight, I'd never hear from her again, nor would anyone else. The thought of Lola and Clark living in happiness when I... Please continue. The next thing I knew, I'd killed her. Why, you killed Butler. Rice came in when I was preparing the clues. He threatened to expose me and to silence him, I gave him Lola's jewels. When he was caught with them and was about to accuse me, I shot him. Understand. To one who kill, life can suddenly become most precious. You are prisoner, Senor Suto. Senor Marana is free. Si, sí, senor. Ms. Ashby, you are under arrest. Thank you all for being so patient. You may now go. Thank you. Congratulations, Senor Chan, on a remarkably fine job. Fruits of labor are sometimes very bitter. Chief Hop, it's too bad you didn't get woozy on that cigarette. I had a very important question I was going to ask you. May I ask now? Okay. If Lily will consent, may I take her back to Honolulu with us? No. Oh, Chief Pop, I'm crazy about her. So sorry. I forgot to tell you, I have received cable from your honorable mother. You have been drafted in the United States Army. Well, how do you like that? Now I got a war on my hands. Not wish to go? Sure. With me in it, Pop, the war's in the bag. It's a... I know, I know. It's cinch. <laughs> <laughs>